Hello and welcome to today's Your Daily Five. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and it is certainly a pleasure to join you on this Wednesday, July 19th. I know many of you uh, have watched my shows and uh, different uh, art, you know, read articles and so forth, and I'm generally pretty bullish. Um, and I am still very bullish the long term. I think the market will continue to do well, break to all time highs, and trade well into next year. But short term, we got some issues, and uh, I'm ready to issue a couple warnings today. So uh, in, I think in the short term, the market could uh, have some difficulty. It's all about managing risk. It's not necessarily whether you go up or down. Sometimes it's just about being cautious when the market tells us to be cautious. So I've got five charts for you today that I want to talk about, and I'm going to start off with this volatility index. So on the top of this chart, I've got the VIX. Then I've got the S&P 500. And if you notice down here at the bottom, there's a correlation that shows the VIX and the S&P 500. And if you know much about the VIX and the S&P, you know that they tend to move opposite one another. The volatility index generally goes up when the market goes down and the VIX goes down when the market goes up. And that's shown here in the correlation at the very bottom. You'll see most of the time the correlation is down near minus one, showing that the two tend to move opposite one another. But these blue vertical dotted lines right here um, also highlight the times when we start to see um, more positive correlation, where they actually start to go in the same direction. And what I've found over the years is that when you see this, many times it's signaling that there's going to be a reversal in the S&P 500. If the S&P is going down, normally I look for a, a, a pop and a rebound. If the S&P 500 has been going up, then I look for a reversal to the downside. If you go back and you look, this is just over the last five years, there are roughly about 10 times when we've seen this happen, where we've had the um, correlation turn positive. You can see back in uh, 2019 in May, um, the correlation turned positive just as the S&P 500 reached the top and reversed lower. In 2020, in January, we saw the VIX and the S&P 500 begin to positively correlate again when the S&P 500 was near a high. We saw a pullback over the next few weeks and then an ultimate high the next month. If you look uh, further on, September of 2020, uh, this was a great signal. I wrote about this at the exact time that it happened. Uh, check this out. This is early September. I'm going to show you the stock charts article I wrote in just a second. Um, but here you can see the S&P 500 going higher, the VIX started going higher, and there you can see that positive correlation. That was the highest that we've seen, and looking back over these last five years, we've never seen the correlation more positive. The S&P 500, which was on a tear to the upside, reversed and ended up going back down. Uh, and then you can just follow along. I mean, each of these, I would say the, the one signal that didn't work so well was December of 2020 where the S&P was going up, we saw a positive correlation, and the S&P just kept going higher. But just about every one of these, um, besides that one, has shown a reversal that's happened after the uh, positive correlation has surfaced. And look at where we are right now. I mean, the last one we had was back in early January of 2023, and I wrote that I thought stocks were about to explode to the upside because of this positive correlation, the S&P was going down, I was looking for a big reversal. And because I was also bullish market, I thought we could have a really big move there. And we did. We had a great month of January. It was one of the best Januaries that we've seen since uh, I've been tracking the S&P 500 uh, back to 1950. Um, but look at where we are right now. We've been trending higher. And now we just went positive on this correlation again. Let me show you those two articles. So again, the, I'm going to show you this one right here, beginning of September 2020, and then again at the beginning of January 2023. Here are the articles. So there it is, September 3rd, 2020, talking about this positive correlation between the VIX and the S&P 500. There was, I was pointing out how positive it had turned. Look at the S&P 500 absolutely exploding. And then out of nowhere, it turned and went back to the downside. The other one, you can check this out. Here's another sentiment signal. This one saying we could soar short term. That's what I was looking for. And again, 
looking at that positive correlation. Now, many times you hear folks come back and say, oh, well, you know, we topped and we've reversed lower. These are the types of signals that are telling us before we actually do it, which I think is really important. All right, chart number two, I want to talk about the five-day moving average of the equity-only put-call ratio. Here, you can see the uh, this, the top part is the five-day moving average of the equity-only put-call ratio, and I'm focusing on these low readings. The low readings are telling you that more calls are being bought than puts, and as a result, folks, you know, retail traders are getting much more bullish, and the problem is is that when everyone starts heading in one direction on the trade, it's that herd mentality. You're actually looking for a possible reversal when that happens. So these sentiment indicators um, many times are contrarian. So it's telling us everyone's bullish, which means we should be bearish. Check these out. Check out the, you know, I didn't, I don't make this stuff up. Look what they're, where these five-day readings of the equity-only put-call ratio come in whenever we've gone below 0.55. And again, using these blue dotted vertical lines to mark, and you can see what happens to the S&P 500 when this happens. Short-term sell-off, short-term sell-off, short-term sell-off, short-term sell-off, short-term sell-off, short-term sell-off, short-term sell-off. Look at where we are right now. Again, does it guarantee us anything? No, but historically, this is when we need to be cautious, short-term. Third chart. This is the NASDAQ 100. I just want to show you a negative divergence on the daily chart. Very simple chart to understand here. We've got prices going up and we've got the PPO lower. When we see this, what I look for is what I call PPO reset. Uh, I look for the PPO to move back down to the zero line. And that's normally um, done by either going sideways on the S&P 500, or excuse me, here on the NASDAQ 100. I would be looking either for sideways consolidation um, which brings the 50-day underneath from underneath up to maybe meet price action or a sell-off. And if we get a sell-off and we don't hold the 20-day moving average, we could see a move all the way down to that 50-day moving average. At least keep that in mind. All right, um, number four. What I wanted to talk about um, is also the 19th to the 25th of all calendar months. On the S&P 500, since 1950, the 19th to the 25th has produced, all calendar months, 19th to the 25th, has produced annualized returns of minus 7.5%, which is 16.5% below the 9% average annual return. So if we expected every day in the market to be similar, if every day was the same, we should be seeing annualized returns of roughly 9% a day. And if we look at periods, their annualized return should be 9%. Well, the 19th to the 25th, historically, since 1950, this is one week out of every month since 1950. So close to 25% of the days of the month have produced annualized returns of minus 7.5%. I've gone back and I've looked at these days over the course of the last year, and I've highlighted uh, eight of the 12 months. Eight of these months have been pretty poor in terms of performance during that 19th to 25th period. And you can check those out with the highlights. Look where we are right now. We closed on the 18th, right up at a high. Very similar to what we saw in June of last month, uh, you know, June of 2023, so roughly a month ago. Same deal. We were breaking out. We had new highs. Everything looked great. And then we pulled back for a week or so. You go back into May, we were threatening a breakout. And before we broke out, we pulled back one more time during this period. So it's just one more factor. It, you know, I like to follow sen um, or seasonality, his, you know, history. And I think as we look at this, this is the time of the calendar month when we typically see weakness. So be careful with that. Last thing I have for you is I wanted to just pull up, um, you know, many of the FANG stocks, which have so much weight in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ, are showing negative divergences as well. I showed you the NASDAQ negative divergence. Here's Tesla. Tesla is about to report its earnings. 
but it has a negative divergence. If it gaps up with its earnings and fails and prints some kind of a reversing candle, maybe a bearish engulfing candle, maybe a shooting star, something like that with a negative divergence in play and with what likely would be heavy volume, I could see a big reversal, not only in Tesla, but many of the FANG stocks. I think 50% uh, of the NASDAQ is made up I jotted down the chart. So hold on one second. Let me let me read this to you. 50% of the NASDAQ is made up of these seven stocks. Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, Meta Platforms, um, AVGO, which is Broadcom, and Apple, AAPL. Those seven stocks make up 50% of the NASDAQ 100. All seven stocks have a negative divergence right now on the daily chart. Maybe not quite as extreme as we're seeing here with Tesla, but they're all negative. Apple actually is teetering on a breakout. If it breaks out, it'll be negative. On an hourly chart, four of these stocks have negative divergences on their hourly chart. NVIDIA, Tesla, um, Broadcom, and Apple. So we're running out of momentum to the upside. We've got a lot of history that supports a move to the downside. We've got sentiment telling us that we need to be careful. We've got the volatility index and the S&P 500 both correlating positively, which tells us we could reverse. All of these are short-term signals, but they all line up bearishly right now. So as we go in to option expiration week, which is this Friday, monthly options expire on Friday of this week, that tends to be a, a problem as well. I'm not saying we're going lower, but I'm not saying we're not going lower either. Um, listen, it's been a pleasure um, chatting with you here on Your Daily Five again today. I do want to invite you, if you're not already a an uh, Earnings Beats member, we have a free newsletter. If you go over to earningsbeats.com, scroll down, we have a free newsletter. You can sign up with a name and an email address, no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. We'd love to have you three times a week, Mondays, Wednesday, Fridays. I'll send you a chart with two paragraphs. It'll take no more than a couple minutes and potentially provide you some trading opportunities or at least maybe some education or some strategies that might help in your trading. Also, uh, over at Earnings Beats, if you want to try us for 30 days, we have a free trial. Check us out. Just simply click on that green button, start your no-cost trial, and we'll make sure you get set up. Again, thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure joining you today on Your Daily Five. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist, and uh, happy trading, everybody.